Nashukuru Mungu kwa umbali huu wale wakati mwingine ambao Mungu ametupea ili tuje mbele yake. Amen. By the grace of God this afternoon I shall just share something small that I've been learning all through the week. Hallelujah. And uh, just as I did last Sunday, I would like it to be more interactive. What does it mean? So you should be ready. To this what you do, participate because we are learning together. What does it mean? We are learning together. Hakuna mwenye mefika. I can learn from you, and you can learn from me, and we can all learn. We can all learn from our Lord Jesus Christ. One as here. So I want to speak about manipulation. One as here. I want to speak about manipulation this afternoon. We shall learn about manipulation. What is manipulation? What do you think is manipulation? Anybody with an answer? What is manipulation? Like a just right. It's like trying to force to something for your own good. To force into something for your own good. Your own good. Trying to force something in your own good. For your own benefits. <laughs> for your own benefits. <laughs> what does it feel? Any other person with any opinion? One has mm-hmm. Our sister has answered correctly. There are some words that she has spoken which have weight there. Number one, she has mentioned about force. One has mm-hmm. That is part and parcel of manipulation. Another part she has mentioned is about the benefit of the one who is forcing. One has mm-hmm. So the, the entity or the body that is is is, is is putting force on something or somebody is geared towards his or her own benefit or its own benefit. Bana has a fear. And uh, this afternoon, as uh, we are learning about manipulation, I will speak about manipulation in two dimensions. Praise the Lord. Manipulation is in two forms. As we have seen that our sister has just hit the, the nail on its head. There is forceful nature. So if you are being forced, it means that it is something that is out of your will. Bwana as fear. So I'm speaking about manipulation in two dimensions today. There is manipulation as per your will. Then there is manipulation out of your will. Hallelujah. Mark that. There is manipulation out of your will, then there is manipulation without your will. For example, somebody comes to manipulate you, then you agree to that manipulation. That means that you have agreed to be manipulated according to your will. One as you hear. Then there is another manipulation whereby how would you or you don't know, but you find yourself in there, in that you are not given an option to choose whether to agree or not. One as it is. I remember some years back, many years back, there is a time that I really needed a computer. So, nilijikaza na mungu wa njia, nikapata hizo pesa, which were enough to get a computer. And because I was a person who was moving at that time, I thought that it's better if I, I have bought a laptop. So I thought, I've got this money. Though it is small, but it can at least afford a second hand laptop. <laughs> so I remember at that time I had some of my friends, two friends, we were three. So they were two of my friends, we were in the same school and class and they were so close to me. 
So I shared that idea to them and I told them, hey, nimekafuta pesa nimepatikana somewhere. So I'm thinking if I can get a laptop, it can help me and it will also help you. Bonus if you. I was surprised at the answer that they gave me. So they advised me against that intention that I had. So I can hear beer. Hapa situangu, wewe ni mtu mwenye unasonga huku na huku. A laptop is something small, it can be stolen any time. So I can pay all main reasons as why not to, to have a laptop. So ni kafikiria, in the end, I was manipulated by my will. Mbona <laughs> sifio. But after some time, I came to regret it. So ni kwa nauliza, jiliza, ni kwa nini ni ilifikia advice yao. Mbona <laughs> sifio. So hiyo ni example moja I'm giving you. I was manipulated out of my will. Remember manipulation is different from inquiry. I mentioned that and I will draw a clear line between those two words. To inquire maybe assuming that I, I, I want to buy something. Then in my mind I have not made any decision. I am open to any decision that will come. When I come and ask you and you give me an advice. When you ask and I follow it, that is not manipulation. Why? Because my heart was open. It was open as a decide. So I'm inquiring any answer that pattern and the figure in order in Zuri, I will go for that. That is not manipulation. But the moment I have made my mind, I decide to attack and you know he got it, he so I'm just coming to ask for the sake of asking. <coughs> Ukifanya ni, ni, ha, ni change my mind, ni buy another car. You have manipulated me. Bwana sifiri. Why? Because I had made my mind that I want something. So anything that will come and advise me, contrary to what I've decided, that amounts to manipulation. Bwana sifiri. Those are the two forms of manipulation. <coughs> Just an introduction, but I will major on the other part of manipulation, the manipulation out of your will. Bwana, manipulation out of your will. Because manipulation as by your will is something that you can regret and you can rectify and it will be a lesson to you. But ile out of your will, it is something that you do not know. You find yourself in manipulation and unless your eyes are open, it is when you know that hey, he manipulated without my knowledge. That covering today, I will measure on that today. Manipulation out of your will. In spiritual terms, it can be named as manipulation by stars. Buana as if you manipulation by stars. That is manipulation of your will. Why am I saying by stars? We shall go slowly as we learn. What is a star? In the life of a child of God, in the life of a living being, in the life of, the, of man, what is a star? Let's go to the book of Genesis. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, during the creation. The first star that was mentioned in the Bible is in the book of Genesis, chapter 1. And before we read that star, the first mention of the star, I, I want us to understand what was the situation that made God to create the star. Bwana <coughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. There is something that causes God to do something. There has to be an emptiness somewhere for God to fill that emptiness. Genesis chapter 1, let's start from verse 2. The Bible says, the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. This was the state of the earth. God had a plan to bring, before he brings this man in this earth, there was emptiness. There was darkness all over. Then in verse 3, what do we see? <coughs> then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Bwana Kasifiri. God commanded light and light came. 
As I was reading this scripture, I was meditating upon this thing of light. The earth was in darkness. The whole universe was in darkness. When God commanded light to come, I wanted to understand how did this light come? I came to discover that after God commanded that light, the earth was still dark. And I was like, hey, what is happening? Yes, there is light, but again, the earth is still dark. Where was this light in? Verse 5, God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So the evening and morning were the first day. So the first time that God commanded light, it was only to separate darkness and light. Hallelujah. Amen. That light was not to illuminate the earth. After God commanded that, the earth was still in darkness until the fourth day. What does the Bible say on the fourth day? It is when God created the sun. Let's go there to verse 15. I'll go a bit slowly for us to understand. Genesis 1.15 I shall start from 14. Then God said, this is the fourth day now. Then God said, let there be light on the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. What is God saying here? Though there is day and night, there is light, <coughs> there is no difference between day and night. They still have, there, has to, to, there has to be something again to separate day and night. Yeah? And let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them, and let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light on earth. And it was so. Praise the Lord. So we can see that on the fourth day, it is when the earth received its first light. That is when the earth received its first light on the fourth day of creation. What was the purpose of this light? This light was to shine on the earth. But not that alone. You see, there is another purpose of this light. Let's look at verse 18, just down there. Verse 18, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from darkness, and God saw that it was good. Praise the Lord. So we can see that this was to act as a separation. Though there was light, though there was night and day, there was still some form of darkness. So the Bible confirms that there was no difference. So when these lights came, they were to separate now light from darkness. I want us to understand there very well. The Bible says that God is the light of heaven, and in him there is no darkness at all. So the first light that God commanded was him in the heavenly places. Then we see in the fourth day, there is another light that is being created to illuminate this is now the earthly realm. Hallelujah. And these stars which were created, the sun which was created, was now to bring peace on the people who dwell on earth. Verse 16 speaks about a definition of this light. In verse 16, it is the first mention of stars. Then God made two great lights, greater light to rule the light. Day and the lesser light to rule the night. Then he says that he made stars also. I want you to note there and ask yourself a question. If the greater light, the sun, rules the day, then the moon, the lesser light, rules the night. What was the function of these stars? Bonus here. What are the function of these Stars. There is a mystery behind these stars. Now, from the way I understand it, the sun shines, it emits <coughs> light. Science in a Columbia that the moon doesn't emit light, the moon reflects. 
bonus if you and that is no wonder it is lesser these are for seasons days and time but what is the function of the star the star was made particularly for the inhabitants of the earth Bwana Asifiri and it was for dominion it is it is for for dominion over darkness the deficit that is operating in earth was the darkness of the forces of evil so when a star was released a star would always shine you have to note that difference the sun will move with its light in the morning in the evening it sets like that in the, in the morning it rises in the evening it sets the moon was only to reflect in seasons but here was a star the stars always shine not that stars have their light and they always shine that was the purpose why god brought the stars i remember of a story in the bible this man went out in a vision and god asked him what can you see look in the sky what do you see and god answered and he answers god back i see stars then god says to this man as far as you can see these are your descendants there will be as many as these stars what was god speaking to this man these stars represent the inhabitants of the earth one as a few that represents these people who are living what do i mean by this every man who is created by god has a star wana asifiwe mm -hmm. people who have done and have, have, have gotten more revelation from god i have heard some men of god say that people have stars that you can have more than one star i don't know about that because i'm i'm trying to remain scriptural praise the lord unless god reveals that to me <laughs> in the course of this lesson wana <laughs> asifiwe but as far as i know every any person who is born <coughs> in this world there is a star that you have i remember that uh, miss pastor has always been instructing us to pray many times i have seen her guide us to pray that we should pray against evil forces that were released against our stars the day that we were born praise the lord that is just to confirm that when you are born when any child is born when any soul is coming on earth there is a star so know that very well you have a star hallelujah mm -hmm. now where is manipulation coming from and how is it attached to this star manipulation out of your will we were told in the morning here how strife comes strife comes out of the desire for dominion stars shine in the sky when you get up in the night utaziona ingine ta kwa bright ingine didogo ingine it's like in a twinkle only others are just bright like that science inatuambia that we see them according to distance as they appear from earth where we are but in the spiritual realm i have come to understand that some stars are shining more than others and it depends on the plan that god has placed in your life it depends on the call and how your life will be that dictates how your star shines bwana asifiwe but because some people have wisdom of reading star elimu ya nyota because some people have that wisdom they can be able to detect the glory that is behind the star they can be able to detect that this star will be more successful than the other you have heard of stories whereby you see mtu anaenda na badilisha nyota za wengine labda anaiba anabadilisha ya watoto wake na watoto wengine anachukua ya mtu you have heard of this story it is very very real why the stars that represent us are spiritual they are not the stars that we see out there physically praise the lord mm -hmm. when we read in the book of genesis 15 we can see that 
most revelations that Abraham was receiving from God, they were in visions. They can appear like stories, but you see that, that they were happening in visions. When you read in Genesis 15, it's a story that I, I went through along the week. I not read it because of time, but you can read it at your own time. But there is a place that specifies when Abraham was receiving, when he was making a covenant with God, he was told about his generation who were also these stars that God had shown him. They were, he was given a timeline of his generation and what would happen to them. What did God say? Yes, you'll have children, your descendants, and what not. They will go with me. One time, they will fall, they will disobey me. They will go in bondage 400 years. But after that, I will remember them and I will take them out of that bondage to bring them back here where you are in the promised land. These things were happening in a vision. It was not real that it was happening in a vision. So you can imagine, this was a man of God. But God is, 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 a, is, 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 is giving him knowledge about his generation. Centuries to come. What does it mean? Though these people were stars to this man, they were a promise. There was a line, a timeline. There was a direction that God had put in every individual. Maisha yako na nyota yako, mungu alipanga a certain life that you will live in until the day that you will leave this earth. Look at these people. Hawajazali wa bado, but mungu anasema wataasi, then wataenda into bondage. They are not yet born, imagine. That confirms that God knew you before he placed the foundation of this world. God had you in mind before even your parents were born. And God knows your generation, even at this time, when yet you do not have a family. God knows what your children will go through. Though, bado ni wachanga saizi, wana asifiri. Why? These things are inscribed in your star. These things are written in that star. When it comes to wisdom, the people who are wise who can see these stars, they have wisdom. In the morning, I won't go back to that through the fallen angels of dominion. I thank God for that lesson. It just echoed what I was meditating upon. So we can see that there are some people who have that wisdom. That is why they can take a step to go and manipulate you. Why? They can read your life. They can read your stars. Once they know that these are the things that are going <coughs> to happen in your life, they will try to manipulate it. Otherwise, if I do not know the life of John, how will I seek to manipulate him? There is no way. One has to But if I know that his star is brighter than mine, and I envy him, that is when I will maneuver to get moves to manipulate his star. That is how the wisdom comes to manipulate you. Look at the story of the children of Israel when they were in Egypt. The Bible says that after many years, there came a king, a pharaoh, who never knew Joseph. And the Bible says that we pharaoh and Yangajatu were Israel. Then we have to deal with them wisely. If you read the Bible, it says like that. Come, let us deal with them wisely. That means they had a certain wisdom that was higher than the normal wisdom. I believe that this Pharaoh was a magician. And I judge that these people are prosperous, that these people are mighty than us. Yet there were only a handful. How can I in our history, their population? But this Pharaoh said that how are they going? They are mighty than us. So we have to deal with them wisely. What do you think happened there? This man read their stars. And he, he knew that these people are mighty than us. So we need to seek a way of manipulating these people. Wana has a few. These are the manipulations that I'm speaking about. The Israelites were manipulated out of their will. 
wale watu kwa mipaka kama tumeona watu wako hivi so we have to deal with them wisely these are men of wisdom now the bible says in the new testament the bible says that god knows the wisdom of the wise mungu anaongelea watu gani hao people who have evil wisdom god knows the the wisdom of the wise because they are futile that is what the bible says in corinthians mungu anajua hekima ya wenye hekima which means they seek to maneuver to manipulate other people that is what the bible speaks about they their thoughts are futile this is what was happening in pharaoh it is so sad that uh, in our lives there are so many pharaohs there are so many egyptians there are people who just monitor your family they monitor your salvation they monitor your husband your wife your job your career they just monitor they go and inquire <coughs> about your life about you in your cult wakisha jo utakuwa hivi because they cannot get that star from you they will manipulate it bwana asifiwe waganga huona sikia that leta kitu fulani then it will in the real sense they cannot alter those stars they manipulate the stars they can channel the things that are written in that star to work for their own good while you you will suffer that is what they can do they cannot take that star from you because it only belongs to you they can only tap its power they can only tap all that god had planned to come to your life to go to their way Bwana asifiwe. Do you have wisdom? <laughs> Bwana asifiwe. Do you have that wisdom? So you can imagine in your life there are some people who are monitoring you. There are people who are looking into your life. Once they see that there is a star, there are some people in our villages who are specialized in that. Wakigundua tu kuna mtu fulani ana star fulani. I tell you they will do anything to go and take that star. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Is somebody learning something? kama ni mafunzo mbaya elimu ya nyota bwana asifiwe ni mafunzo mbaya na chat let's go to the book of matthew chapter 2 we want to see the story of our lord jesus christ when he was born you know the story but we shall read the scripture matthew chapter 2 verse 1 now after jesus was born in bethlehem of judea In the days of Herod the king behold wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying where is he who had been born king of the Jews for we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him praise the lord Amen. these were wise men from the east they saw the star of Jesus and they have come to worship him not some things here they are wise men they have seen a star they had power to tell this is a star of a king so you can imagine when these people are reading the stars they are ready to tell this is the star of a worshiper this is the star of an evangelist this is the star of a pastor this is the star of a prophet they have that wisdom to distinguish Noanda in the Old Testament God instructed Israelites not to do or to associate themselves with mediums why because through these mediums they would have <coughs> that knowledge and God knew very well that when somebody gets to know that knowledge dominion will come into his life or her life they will seek to dominate so God had forbidden that wisdom but we see that this the wise men who were from the east had seen that star of Jesus ask yourself one question why were they three 
mwana wakuwa two wise men or one wise man why were they three why do you think they were three Why do you think they were three wise men? Why not two? Why not five? Three is the perfect nature of God. So what happens in the spiritual realm? The devil is a manipulator. He is a counterfeiter. So to get a perfect position to manipulate the star of Jesus, he had to set aside three wise men. The wisest man in the Bible says that two is better. When two are joined, it's better because one can help the other one when he falls. But a bond of three cannot be broken. One has healed. So when these wise men came from the east, they were three. That means that whatever they had planned, whatever they had come to do, was sure and was bound to prosper. There was no anything that would challenge that bond because it was a perfect bond. Three wise men from the East. Another question that I was asking myself, how is it that they saw the star? I believe that these people came from very far in those days. Those days, so I believe and you can imagine the speed of a donkey. How would they come they saw the star. So they came, they traveled and traveled and traveled and traveled until they reached that place. I want to believe that it took them days, if not months. It took them a long time for them to get to Bethlehem. Another question that you should ask yourself, why is it that they could take all that long only to come and worship the king? Were there no other kings in their areas in the east, in the Okuja West, but there are no other kings there. Which means there was something special about the star that they were seeing. That should let you know that when your star is brighter, when God has a greater assignment in your life, it attracts more of the wise men towards you. That is a point that you have to know. So the bigger the calling, the bigger the assignment, you need to sink deep in prayers. You need to sink deep to intertwine yourself in God so that you can stand. If this is our Lord Jesus Christ, three wise men are coming from the east. They want to come and see what is happening to this star. You can imagine, if this is our Lord Jesus Christ, what about you? A, 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 a servant is not greater than a master. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> So you have to know that when that happens, if it happened to our Lord Jesus Christ, you are not an exception. Buana Asifiri. Buana Asifiri. Are you tired? You want to pray. You want to pray. Buana Asifiri. As you are going on, I want to gear you into prayers. I want to gear you into these prayers. As we are learning, you focus your mind. At the end of this lesson, we want to go on before God in prayer so that we can be protected. This was our Lord Jesus Christ. But three wise men were after his star. Ask yourself, if Jesus was pursued by a perfect number of wise men, what about you? Wise men, when you are your children, your family, your ministry, they are there. It is not that they are not there. These people are there and they are alive. Another question I was asking myself, if these people were following the star, it means that they had a clear knowledge where the king was born. Why is it that when they came to this land, what happened that the star will there? Immediately they came to this land of Israel. The star got lost. In the house of King Herod. So they were now asking a man, where is this king born? I want you to note something that is hidden there. Why did they find themselves in the house of Herod the king? 
yet they had come to see the king who was born. But the light feathers flow together. <laughs> One as if you. Mm -hmm. That means that what was in the heart of these three wise men was something that was also in the heart of King Herod. Mwizi utembea na wezi. Bwana asifiwe. Pastor bwana tembea na pastor. Mlevi utembea na malevi. That is what happened. So when these three wise men wanakuja wanaingia kwa Herod, mbona mbona tu waende kwa Herod wa Mwizi? It means that they had something, they had some magnets in their heart which were alike. And the scripture says here in verse 2, when they came to the king, they asked that, where is this king that has been born? They thought that who is going to have knowledge. Now, note this, these are people who are wise. They cannot ask anybody who is not wise about something that is hidden. That means that King Herod also had some wisdom. Not that. Yes, they were wise, but when attack another another encouragement or another direction from another wise man. So it means that Herod was also a wise man. Though he was the king there. So when they asked Herod, Herod was a fellow wise man. And I particularly noted their language here. The wise men say that we have come to worship him. <laughs> we have come to worship this king. Then we see also in, in verse 8 of Matthew chapter 2. Verse 7 and 8. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, they came in public, but Why? Because they are wise men. They cannot expose their agendas now to other people. Then Herod, when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what time the star appeared. So you can see that Herod was a wise man, but he was not keen to note that star. He was a wise man, yes, but he was not keen to know the star of Jesus. Then, and he sent them to Bethlehem, and say, go and search carefully for the young child, and when you when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. So we can see that the wise men said, We have come to worship him. Now, after that, Herod is also saying that I may also come to worship him. What was hidden between this worship? What was hidden? under this worship. What is to worship? To give praise. What is to worship? To praise, to elevate, to be thankful. So you can imagine that people who are after your star, they can come around you in form of worshippers. They can come around you as friends. They can be your neighbors. They can be your fellow church members, your mentors or anybody. But as long as they have that spirit of wisdom in them, they will masquerade as your friends, as people who want to worship you. This was what was happening in the life of Jesus. How do we see that connection? It is clear in verse 7, in verse 8. The Bible says that then Herod sent them to Bethlehem. Why did Herod send them? Yet in the first place, how can I draw you in order? He took out at Gan. Alipata wisdom gani tena wambie that go to Bethlehem. Ask yourself that question. We have always been taught here that witches do network. <laughs> witches do network. For example, if there is a witch in your village, they are bound to operate in that village. There is no way they can come to attack you here. So, for that person to attack you, they'll have to network with a witch who is in Nairobi around you because every witch has a database of his or her area. That is what happens. He has influence where they are. So, at a network now, you will have the power of the ground to reach you. These wise men also had dominion and wisdom 
in their areas. But when they came to Herod, they needed another wisdom to network the wisdom so that they can get a clear and a precise direction. So you can see that after when you visit Herod in verse 7, Herod had done anything. But when you visit the Eostas Jayona, at what time did it appear? You can imagine. But after they have networked, there is something that happened between verse 7 and verse 8. Secretly, they were hidden somewhere. I believe maybe they were meditating or consulting their occult. But in verse 8, you see that Herod now had a clear picture. This king is in Bethlehem. So he sent them. And then Bethlehem. What is his agenda? He's also a witch, and he knew it. He's, he's also a, a wise man, sorry. So he knew that these people have their agenda to go and worship in court. So, and I also have an agenda. So when you find him, I want also to, he will inform me so that I can also go and worship him. Praise the Lord. Why all this worship? Only because of the star. So you can imagine if your star is bright, how many people will want to come and worship you? <laughs> in quotes. In one as a few. This is something that happened to the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible calls these people wise men, but these people were manipulators. They had seen the star of Jesus was bright, so they wanted to manipulate that star. How can you move from here? Assuming in, the, in Europe, because a king is there, I want to go and, uh, and see the baby shower of that king. How many children are born around here? How many kings or presidents are born around here that are not attracted to them? That shows that there is a clear agenda for these people who journeyed from the east to go to follow the star of Jesus. When they came to Herod, the star had disappeared. But the Bible says that the moment they got out of the house of Herod, the star reappeared. That means they had that power to summon the star to be visible again. And they left to go and see that child. When they reached there, they gave Jesus the gift. Do you think that there were no rich people in the land of Israel who would come and give this gold to the king who was born? There were rich people there, I believe. But why is it that only these are coming to their gifts to give to this king who is born? There was a hidden agenda. The wise men had come to manipulate the star of Jesus. They were not people who feared God. The king was not somebody who feared God. They all had that agenda. They were people who were manipulating the life of Jesus. And I tell you what happened. Look at the life of Jesus Christ. He was young, but I tell you his life was manipulated. Go to the book of Isaiah the prophet. What does he say? This was a man who was rejected. He's the man who suffered a lot of things. In fact, as I was meditating in this, I really pitied our Lord Jesus Christ. His life was miserable than any other king who ever lived in this world, you can imagine. Yet he's the king of kings. At his tender age, wise men who have been prepared by God have given him the example of Abraham and his descendants, the stars. They are not yet born, but their fate is already determined. So I believe that Lord Jesus Christ, before he came, God knew that, okay, the wise men will come and manipulate him. So that we hear this and this and this, in the end, he will save the universe. So thank God, even for those people who are after your star, because it is the process that God has made for you. What has if you? Amen. If these people do not manipulate your star, you imagine you is a liver, you are in a rich family, you, are, you have everything. Maybe Sayon Gepu Apanasis. I was looking at myself. Assuming that since I was born, my stars have never been touched by any witch, have never been eyed by anyone. So obviously I could not have prospered, I would not be here. If in Gekwani for a business, a mansion, I could not have any time to seek God. <laughs> but because my star was manipulated, my star was eyed by somebody, that made me to be squeezed, to be pushed to the wall. You need to take a man and say, what are you doing <laughs> what else you? Mm -hmm. Look at the life of Jesus. A place comes where Jesus says that foxes have holes, 
birds have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Hapu wata na simba. You can imagine. And it's the king of kings. Manipulation of the wise men. They manipulated his life. Look at the life of Jesus. Aliishi maisha ngumu sana. Rejected by even your people. You have been sent to preach in Nazareth. But wana kwambia, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Why? Your life has been manipulated. Yesu ngekua a celebrity in his hometown. If these people had not manipulated his life. But, kama ngekua a celebrity, maybe, hangi tafuta mungu vile inafa. If that happened to our Lord Jesus Christ, do you think you are an exception? There is no way you can be an exception. The Bible says that do not think of the things you experience as being different. That means that it is a protocol that God has given upon every child of God. As long as God has a purpose in your life, your star will always shine bright. The Bible says that we are the light of the world. Genesis 1, as we have read, what does it say? Stars were to shine and to rule. So if you are a light of the world, you will always shine. The Bible also says that we are the light of the world and we are set upon the hill. The Bible asks that, can a lamp be put under a bed? No way, because it has to give light. So God has put you as a light on the hill so that everybody may see you. So you know that as a child of God, as you are called, your star is always bright. But the manipulators will always come. Does it mean that God is unfair to allow manipulators in your life? Is God unfair? What do you think? Is God unfair? Hey. <laughs> what do you think? Mixed reactions. <laughs> God is not unfair. The Bible says that He has perfect plans for us. God allows that. I was looking at this and I came to realize one thing. God allows manipulation in your life so that you can get to the point of salvation. From the moment you are saved, manipulation will start fading off slowly by slowly. Why? The manipulations were to manipulate you to seek God, to get to the point of salvation. The more you dig deeper to seek God, the more these things are falling off. Jesus Christ was manipulated, but when he got to 30 years, when he got baptized, heavens were opened. What happened when heavens were opened? That indicated that the manipulation that was under the star started reducing, backing off. Why? This is my son whom, in whom I am well pleased. Can God say that? Yes, when you are saved, this is my son because he has accepted me. Those who are moving by the Spirit of God are called the sons of God. So once you become a son of God, that is when this manipulation starts falling off your star. Till you reach the peak of your ministry. Till you reach where God has preordained for you. Buana as if you. Amen. So you can imagine how your star has been manipulated. Since you got saved, do you still face these things? Look from the day you got saved. Can you see any difference in your life? Maybe you can see any difference in your life since you were born. But since you see this Wokoke Paka Leo, you can at least say that I have seen a change. I have seen a difference. I have seen there is something moving in my life. That indicates that your star is being set free. Your star is being free from manipulation. When the children of Israel, when their star was being released, look at their journey in the land of Egypt. God told Abraham, after 400 years, that is in the vision, after 400 years, I will remember them and I will bring them back here to this promised land. It took 400 years for their star to be resumed back to what God intended for them. They were judgments that God released in the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Amen. Until these people are free. And last Sunday, as we were praying here, there were very powerful prayers, I tell you. When we, we learned about judgments of God, releasing us from this bondage. These forms of bondage are the manipulations. 
that are coming from the wise men who have hacked into our stars. And I tell you, and I'll, I'll share it as, as a testimony. We prayed that Sunday. This week it was still a burden in me about this manipulation, about this manipulation. Because I'm looking at the time between now and the end of the year, the three months that are remaining, and I'm relating it to the prophecies that God gave us in the beginning of this year. And in my heart, I'm determined to say and to ask God and to claim what rightfully belongs to me and to this place. One as he feels. Amen. After the prayers that we made along the week, there is a vision that came. It was very real and I was really shocked. I had a vision that there is a relative of mine. I've never met that relative. The physical world is the internet. I've only seen her photo. <laughs> the picture. And I remember I mentioned picture by you She's a relative, but in child, and I So the same old things about you. Then I said, I'm okay. Even if it is witchcraft and manipulation, who in a fika mission? How you find always forever? So in the visions. This the lady came. We were somewhere and we were, we were about to move to the next level. We went a meeting with some people, some people here. So we talked in that meeting, we talked, we talked, and in fact, we found your chapter, we go to another chapter. So as we were just about to close that chapter, we go to another chapter, this lady appeared from nowhere. Hey, what So when the lady came, she started confessing the things that she has done. And then I confessed the things, the things we took And then I, I, I realized that the prayers that we were making here that Sunday were not a joke. Wana secure. So it is a time that you have to know, yes, God has given you a clear picture. God has spoken in your life. But manipulators are there. Look at that book of Matthew. I want, I want you to grasp something there. In verse 5, these are wise men. In verse 5, they say that, so they say to him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. These are people who are not Israelites. Hmm? They are Israelites. But want to follow what a prophet said. So if you can imagine that these people who are tracking you, they follow even the prophecies that come in your life. You can imagine. When a prophet stands here and says, when you can hear everybody in this church, I'm a city's bells. Everybody, his own car. So he seeks to manipulate my star. I see a prophecy about somebody. So you're getting into the ministry of God. It is like we attack will dominate even that ministry. So these people follow even prophecies. They follow things that are declared by God. Now, as children of God, there is only one equation, which is a good equation and a dangerous one. <laughs> Amen. Amos chapter 3, verse 7. That is the dangerous equation in our lives. The Bible says that surely the Lord does nothing unless He exposes it or He speaks through His servants, the prophets. So that means that every plan in our lives. So it means that the wise men will always be in a position to know what will happen in their life. But that puts us in a place whereby we have to stand in constant prayers. We have to stand. You have to follow it. Our pastor always wants to be up When a prophecy comes, it requires very many prayers to back it up. So you can imagine these levels of manipulation in our lives. Manipulation by we is something small. Nikidogo because you make bad. But this which is out of your will is dangerous. Many people have died and gone to the grave 
why their lives were manipulated and they never knew anything about it. As long as you are not in Christ, God may not reveal those mysteries or the things that are hurting you and you can perish for lack of knowledge, just like that. Yet your star is right somewhere and it is being hacked by other people. One as a few. I've been speaking about individual level of stars. When it comes to a congregation, specifically the church, the star is referred to as a lamb. When you read the book of Revelation, John was being shown seven lambs, which were in charge of every church. So a church has a lamb. You have a star, a church has a lamb before the throne of God. So you can imagine, this lamp can also be manipulated. Why? It also shines. So as you're going to prayers, put in mind also that intercede for yourself, your family, your generation, but also intercede for the church because you are part of this church. And you need to seek God. You need to call on God and tell him if there are any manipulators if there are any manipulators in our lives, may they be wept away. May they be swept away out of our lives. Look at the boy of the children of Israel. The last Sunday, we spoke about the ten judgments until they were released. But do you know what? After the ten judgments, they were still not free. Pharaoh released them, but they were still not free. One as you until the eleventh judgment came, and I was like, "Wow!" So I need this eleventh judgment of God in my life so that I can break free. Last time we prayed those ten judgments, and from the visions that I've received this week, I can confirm that those judgments have come in the life of manipulators in our lives. We shall just read small scripture there, then we shall go to prayers. Let us look at the eleventh judgment. The tenth judgment that made children of Israel to be released was the death of every firstborn in the land of Egypt. <coughs> when I read Genesis 49, Jacob called his sons to bless them. Verse 2 says that, Reuben, you are my firstborn. You are my strength. And you are my excellence. I want to ask you. So you can see that when the children of Israel were being released, it is the strength of Pharaoh and Egyptians that was touched. They were still alive. Yes, there was death. Death of firstborns means their strength was captured. The strength of these magicians, of these manipulators, was held. But they are still alive. And the Bible speaks about strength. Strength can be renewed. <laughs> the Bible says that those who wait on the Lord, you don't have strength, you're waiting on the Lord, your strength will be renewed. So it means that when these manipulators, when God has shaken their strength, if they still dwell in their shrines and in their altars, one time they can renew their strength. When they renew their strength, they will devise a new way to attack you. Exodus chapter 14. The last scripture that I'm reading, then we are going into prayers. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14, verse 5. Now it was told to the king of Egypt that the people had fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. These are the children of Israel whom they have released. They released because their strength was weakened. So because they are weak, they can do nothing. Let, let us release them. And they say, why have we done this? What we have... Why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us. So he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. What does the Bible speak here? It was not on the same day, on the same day that they left, that they pursued them. It was after some days. 
a few days. It is when their strength was renewed. Because when they were weak, when they were released. So when the strength in the Kidogo, they now remember, why have we left keeping these people in bondage? Why have we released them? Then what do we see? They purpose to go and pursue them. And God in heaven saw and said, hey, what is really happening? My people have been released, but bad water on our pursuit. No wonder God said in 18 that you should not let a witch live. Because God knew that as long as a manipulator lives, they will always seek to renew their strength and manipulate your life. The only remedy is until they die. Buana as you feel. What do we see in verse 27 and 28 of that chapter? The Bible says that when they pursued the children of Israel, even in the seabed, God caught them in their wheels of their carts. It was in a talk. Then these people realized. Remember, they are wise people. Wakiona, wana pursue Israel, but wakona shida, wakona challenges. They came to know again, wakasema abadu. Ino nekana, umungu wana wakikabia. So they said, what? Let us go back. Because it seems that their God is strong on their behalf. Yes, it was God. How did they know it? They had spiritual eyes. The Bible says that God was looking at the Egyptians from the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. So they knew that God is there. He's looking at us. So let us go back. But what does the Bible say? God commanded Moses to point his staff towards the sea and they were swallowed up by that water. In verse 28, the Bible says that not one of them remained. Hallelujah. Mm. And that confirms the word that God gave to Moses. The Egyptians that you see today, you will see them no more. Today, as we are learning this, have in your mind, God is speaking to you. The manipulations that you see in your life, you will see them no more. Just focus on Him. Children of Israel were told, Focus on God and move forward. Moses was, was troubled. God went by him. God spoke to him. Have I not commanded you to move forward? Stand and see the salvation of God. You keep on moving forward. How do we move forward? Prayer and fasting. Calling upon God. Seeking God. Crying to Him. So this afternoon, with those few remarks, I want you to stand on your feet. I believe you have that holy anger. I personally am tired in my life. Lack every time. I'm tired in my life. Ups and downs every time. I'm really tired in my life. Yet I'm serving the living God. You can imagine, we are serving a living God here. Who speaks? Who speaks? But these things are not materializing in our lives. Why? Manipulators have gone themselves. They did these things long before. We knew it. In the morning, we were told that a witch must be in the heart. These people are manipulating us. These people are manipulating you with knowledge. So, until these things in them die, as we were told in the morning, if it is a character of Pentecostal witchcraft amidst us, it has to die. If there are witches who are operating in your cult and they know what they are doing, that also they are physical. Unless they die, Yes, they have been weakened, but unless they die, we can't be free. So if you mean, if you want to be free, rise up on your feet now. You want to go before God. You want to call upon God. He's God who created us. He's the Lord who knew us before he brought us in this life. He's the God who told Jeremiah that I knew you before he placed you in your mother's womb. Tell God that, you knew, that he knows the manipulators in your life. But today, enough is enough. Tell God that today you want to break forth from this spiritual prison. Tell God that today you want to break forth from the life of manipulation so that you can reach where God wants you to be. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, go before God as you are led by the Spirit. Go before God and I tell you if there are any manipulations in your staff, if there are any people who have had to start, if there have been any forces that were released on that day that you are going to counter your start, manipulate your life, 
Tell God that today you are renouncing that. Tell God that you don't want that. You are tired of that life. And ask God to deliver you. This is a prayer of deliverance. Tell God to deliver you. He is your deliverer. If there is anything that is binding this ministry, if there is anything that is acting against the prophets of this ministry, ask God that his power of deliverance prevail in this ministry. Let it prevail in the, even in the life of our pastor Washington because he is the mission bearer of this church. Pray for him. Pray for the servants of God in this place as you are led by the Spirit so that we can all be free, so that we can reach the potential that God has blessed for us. For he is a God who has led us in our lives. Mercy for the Father in Jesus' name. This evening we adore you. We glorify you and we elevate your holy name. We thank you for you as a God who has great plans in our lives. You have great plans for every soul here. You have great plans for this ministry. You have great plans to establish, plans to have a good future, plans to prosper in all that we do, my Father, my God. And this is why we are in your presence today. This is why we are here to hear from you. We are here to learn from you. Lord, you know our lives. Our lives are open before you. You know our manipulators. You know all that you place in our stars by saving. But these men of wisdom, they have come to manipulate our lives. They have come to manipulate my life, oh Lord. I am your child, oh my Savior. You have great plans in my life. I pray today in Jesus' name. I am tired of manipulation, oh Lord. Your word says my life that everything of God in prayer, that we should not be worried, but we should pray and and lay all that we need unto you at your feet today. Today, Jesus said, I enter that the throne of grace. As I seek that grace today, my Savior, to be delivered from manipulation. I seek that grace tonight, O Lord, to be delivered from manipulation in my ministry, every form of manipulation in my family, in my generation, yes, in my job, in my career. I pray today in Jesus' name. You are the Lord who sees. You are the Emperor Elohim, the God, the, our Creator who sees. You go before me and you know my life. Lord, my God, may you look into my life, penetrate my ministry now, search my life before. If there have been any form of manipulation, I pray today in Jesus' mighty name. May you reverse it. May you cancel it now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. These wise men and their wisdom, today, O oh Lord, my Savior, as you are delivering me, my Father, my God, their wisdom is being turned into foolishness. All that they are planned in my life, today, it is being cancelled in Jesus' mighty name. My Father, my God, I'm calling upon your power now. I'm calling upon your fire now. To go, my Father, and live in the camps of witches. To move in the camps of manipulators. If there be any glory that belongs to me, if there be any glory that belongs to my ministry, that belongs to my generation, I pray today, may that glory be restored. May it be restored and may it work wonders in my life. May it work according to my life. In Jesus' mighty name, years that have been eaten by locusts in my life, due to manipulation, I pray today in Jesus' name, Lord, may you repay these years. May you restore these years in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is rightfully mine, my Father, my God, that is in the hands of my blessings, I command it now to locate me. I command it now to come back to my life. In Jesus' name, I pray for my children, oh Lord, wherever they are, if there be any persons or any people, if there be any witch, any wizard, any sorcerer, any magician, any wise man or wise woman who have hacked into their stars, who have hacked into their lives, I pray today in Jesus' name, my Father, my God, may they be exposed. And now may they restore all that belongs to these children in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, my God, I pray today, my Father, for this ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever rightfully belongs to this people, and has been manipulated by manipulation, and has been stolen, has been purloined by powers of darkness out of the quest of dominion. I pray this evening in Jesus' mighty name. May it be restored. May it be restored. May it be restored. In the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, my God, you are our deliverer. I pray today in Jesus' name. Deliver us from this bondage. Deliver us from my time. Deliver us from these spiritual reasons, oh Lord. How long shall we last? How long shall we be in poverty? How long shall we be limited? In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for this deliverance, oh Lord. I pray even for a mission bearer. My Father, my God, Pastor Washington. 
I commit to keep you with your hands on God. I pray in the name of God. May you penetrate his life. See if there is any form of manipulation. Yes, if there is any form of manipulation in his family, in his endeavors, in his plans, even in his ministry. My Father, my God, may you restore all that has been followed yes. from him. May you restore all that has been stolen from him. May you strengthen him today in Jesus' name. May you put a watcher in his life, oh God, so that this ministry may reach where my father, my God, is close and you have spoken to him that the ministry is going to reach. I pray today against manipulators of this ministry, with their being manipulators of God, who are manipulating this ministry, the servants of God in this ministry. My father, my God, in this manipulation, it is out of our hearts, even it is out of people's hearts, people who curse for my father, people who speak negative things. May those characters, may those behaviors be destroyed. May they be wiped out of their hearts in Jesus' name. If they are being witches and wizards who are consulting or characters, who are consulting powers of magic, powers of evil to my blessed ministry, I pray today in Jesus' name. May the fire of God move in their lives now. May the fire of God move now in their, in their altars. May the fire of God move now in their lives to torment them, to torment them and then until they release all life will belong to this ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray today in Jesus' name that my Father, my God, may all that belongs to this ministry be restored in Jesus' name. May all that belongs to us be restored now in the name of Jesus Christ. For I know that you are the God who restores. You are the God who knows our lives. My Father, my God, you knew even the life of the children of Israel. Before they were yet born, you knew that they would go to bondage. And one day you would restore them. Today, my Father, my God, I pray for this restoration event in this ministry. He knew how this ministry will move. He knew the life of this ministry. And as you have spoken of restoration, as you have spoken of your plans, I pray today, King Jesus, remember your people, remember our prayers, remember our fasting, restore us today in Jesus' mighty name. My Father, my God, release your servants from every form of bondage, every form of manipulation in the life of your servants in this church. Restore them today in Jesus' name. Every stolen virtue in our children, in every man, in every woman in this ministry that has been altered by manipulation. I pray today in Jesus' name, may it be restored, may it be restored, may it be restored in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, my God, if there be any gifts that you have released in the people of this ministry, if there be any gifts of any person that you have put in them and it is under manipulation, it is under suppression, I pray today in Jesus' name, may you restore these gifts to operate according to your original will. May you restore these gifts. May you stir them up in the name of Jesus Christ. We reject manipulation today. We renounce manipulation today in Jesus' mighty name. My Father, my God, if there be any manipulation in this ministry that has come out of our will, oh, we renounce it today. We renounce it today in Jesus' name. We cancel it today in Jesus' name. We renounce it today in Jesus' name. And we repent of those moves that resulted in manipulation out of our will. Oh Lord, may you restore us. May you forgive us and may you restore us so that we can move according to your original will. So that we can move according to your original plan in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Lord and glory and honor we shall give unto you. We bless you because your mind is given. We thank you because of the God of your soul. We thank you, Lord, because you have remembered us today. We thank you, Lord, because you are doing something we love you. We thank you because you are watching over your wife and your feet. My Father, my God, this is the last day of the temple. And I pray, oh Lord, in Jesus' name, the three months that are remaining in this year, the three months that are remaining for this year, today, I plead, oh God, that you may do something to market. I plead, oh Lord, that you may honor your work. I plead, oh Lord, that in this in this hundred days, open window, the three months that are remaining, I pray today in Jesus' name, may you restore this ministry, may you restore your people in this ministry. Any man, any woman, any child who seeks to do that spirit, today I pray and I pray, oh Lord, may you restore us, align us to your will. Whatever manipulation that has been in your life today, my Father, my God, we renounce it and I pray, may you correct it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you see that you are the only God, you are the only person who can make crooked ways straight. I pray today, oh Lord, any manipulation that has made our way and our walk with you to be crooked, I pray today. In Jesus' name, may you make it straight, may you restore it tonight, may you restore it in the life of 
have forgiven you for the mighty name of Jesus Christ. For the sake of your holiness and for the sake of your power and for the sake, my Savior, of your mass in our life, have mercy on us to make the offer of the table. You know the things that have been done in six years. Yes, expose them all. You know the things that have been done in six years. I pray to Jesus name that you will overcome them. They may have been done without our knowledge. They may have been done without the knowledge of our pastors. They may have been done without the knowledge of us. But Lord, you are the one who sees. The Lord will see you now. You see the things that are done in sin. May you restore us today. Restore this ministry today. Restore your servants today. Restore your children today. Restore this man and this woman. Restore that child of my Savior. In the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, my God, you brought us here together because there is a God that you have put in our life. There is a common place that you have put in our life. You knew that every person who has a gift to become in this place and operate according to that. I pray in Jesus' name. Reopen the lives of your people, Lord. Free them from this manipulation so that this church may start. Free them from manipulation, oh Lord. So that this church may start. Families in this place, oh Lord. Families that are under manipulation. I pray today, oh Lord, the family is the unit of the church. May you free this family from manipulation, oh Lord, so that this church may start. So that this ministry may start. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I know that glory and honor we bless you because of our mind and your books. Thank you because of being Christian. Thank you because you have come to my mind. Thank you because you have done the sound and the Bible in our midst today. May you be in the middle of the Bible forever, O Lord. Everlasting Father in Jesus' name, I thank you for this Father that you have grown. Lord, my Father, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ upon our family members, upon our children. I come against every spirit of backlash that may come against the prayers that we have made. My Father, my God, may they be disgraced in Jesus' name. If there be wounds of hell, if there be powers of darkness, if there be witches who are seeking to restore their energy to counter us, I believe the blood of Jesus Christ in our life so that we may be shielded from their counter attacks, so that we may be shielded from their backlash in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, O oh Lord, just as you have said, that unless they die, they cannot be free. Yes, my Father, my God, if you know that these people are fighting us and they cannot change, we plead that they may die so that we may be free. For the sake of your power in this ministry, for the sake of your excellence in the lives of your people, may you do it according to your will and according to your time. In the name of Jesus Christ. As your people are going even to rest, O oh Lord, in their homes, I plead your protection upon them. Guide them, shield them, even in their ways, O Lord. May every power of darkness that may seek even to counter us, even in our journey's hope, may it be disgraced in Jesus' name. Be with us, Lord, even as we enter into the call of seeking you. Give us that strength so that you may do something remarkable according to the word that you are speaking unto us from morning, Lord, even unto now. We bless you and we acknowledge your presence here. We acknowledge that it has taken your power, it has taken your strength, and we honor you. Be elevated and be magnified highly in this place forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for taking.